people have no idea. I see stuff I'm just not trying to see. Uh, but at any rate, when I get here in Greensboro, I have this dream, and I, all of a sudden I'm standing in front of this really nice house out in the county, and all of a sudden, immediately, I'm in inside the house. I walk inside the house, and there are three white men sitting on the sofa. And there's a table in front of them, a coffee table, you know. Well, I'm standing in front of them, and I walked in the room so quickly I startled them. All three were startled. And of the three that were there, the one on to my left looked at me and said, I know who you are. The other two immediately looked at him like, you know, what do you know about this guy that we don't know? But see, that guy recognized the call in my life and the anointing on my life immediately, within seconds. Now, all three were startled I walked in on them because I walked in on them unexpectedly. All of a sudden, I'm standing there in front of them. Mm -hmm. Next thing I know, you know, I just, I didn't say anything. I just looked at him and just walked away. And so that was instant recognition. Yeah, I've been around a lot of my brethren and they didn't know who I was. Mm -hmm. I've even told people years later, that I said, you actually blew it. God had me come to you and you didn't even recognize who I was. I talked to a, an assistant pastor years ago for almost two hours. And I explained to him, I said, uh, Y'all blew it. You were told by a prophet that came to your church that it was a local apostle that you need to get in touch with, contact with. The so young man that I was mentoring at the time was excited, came back and told me because he knew they were talking about me coming to the church. I said, I came to your church. I think I came there three times. Each time I came, the pastor wasn't there. The assistant pastor and his wife were leading the service. I introduced myself to him. Now, I didn't tell him who I was. I just you know, said I was in ministry. And that I was there. Because see, the thing about this, if you meet a real prophet or apostle, you're supposed to be able to tell them something different when you meet them. If you can't, then you have the problem. You're the person that can't discern. And so uh, I forgot how I wound up getting back in touch with him. But I explained to the young man, I said, you missed it. I said, the Lord sent me to you. I said, I want to talk to your mom. I said, but she was never there when I came. I said, but I talked to you, introduced myself to you, told you I was in ministry, gave you my contact information. I said, but you didn't discern who I was. I told him I was that local apostle that y'all had been told by the prophet to get in contact with. And so he talked about a ministry, see, and that what happened, what opened it up was he talked about he'd gone to a prayer uh, thing in Dallas, Texas, uh, with Marcerillo. I, I told him, I said, well, I'm on Marcerillo Board of Elders. I said, I actually, I'm actually wearing the watch, which I have on here now. I've had this watch for 19 years. <clears throat> Pretty good watch. <laughs> uh, and I explained to him that y'all missed it. Well, guess what? Even after talking to him for two hours, they never got back in touch with me which means he probably had a conversation with his mom, who is a pastor, and she still refused to, to, to contact me. Mm -hmm. See, so see, the body of Christ. People in the body of Christ. Being dysfunctional. Because mm -hmm. it's like the Bible says that the foundation of the church is built upon, is, is set upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Jesus Christ being the cornerstone. And you said initially how, like the church ain't moving in power, the biggest reason why the church ain't moving in power is because these pastors don't want to cooperate with the apostolic and the prophetic offices. Mm -hmm. And it's very dysfunctional because it's it's almost like it's almost like it's almost like a basketball team where none of the players want to confer with like the coaching staff. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like, I mean, granted, you could you could make an analogy where where the fivefold ministry where the where the apostles and prophets were on the floor, mm -hmm. but just to convey like the type of vision and direction that the apostolic and the prophetic have that the other three ministries don't have. That's why I, that's why I analogize them with like the coaching staff. It's like you're if you're out on the floor doing stuff, there's certain things that just sitting on the bench 
and watching the game and watching mm -hmm. things come together that you mm -hmm. can see that the people who are out there in the middle of it that they can't see. So it's like you call a timeout, you call cats over. It's like you, know, you break out that diagram, mm -hmm. you start doing them X's and O's, and then you're able. It's like we talked. You told me about this. Uh, you know, historically talking about like the legacy of like a Dean Smith, for example, how games were won, how he had amazing talent, mm -hmm. but then games were won because he would figure out some way because he had a he had an understanding of the macro narrative of the game. And he was like, OK, all right, if we do this strategic move, mm -hmm. we'll be able to do so and so and so and so. And like, and that's the difference. And that's how come that God's established like a hierarchy in fivefold ministry is because certain people are just gifted more responsibility and more uh, more gifts than than others. And unfortunately, like what you said with this whole soul spirit, it's like people get so caught up in themselves and um and they and and just like a ball hog on any basketball team mm -hmm. the second you get caught up in yourself and ball hogging my phone does that mm -hmm. the uh oh well, no that, that, that's probably flow yeah no yeah no. yeah yeah, well, yeah it, 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 my phone might be getting ready to go off after probably, while. yeah probably <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, it's like you get these preachers or these pastors mainly because the Catholic, the Catholic Church is the reason I come. These pastors think so ridiculously, like they do. Um, it's like they're very self-centered, and they're all about. Uh, they just be ball hogging instead of passing the rock. It's like, dude, it's not all about you. Sidebar: Somebody posted that picture of uh, Trump sitting with those coonish black pastors, and one and the main dude to be doing all the talking had a cigar in his hand, a lit cigar. <laughs> and somebody said they were like, "Yo, they were like, ain't nobody gonna say anything about him having a cigar in his hand." And then they were <laughs> like, "This is why we can't take these preachers serious that support Trump." I digress, but it's like, but you, but 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 you know, any yeah. any preacher, you know, what I'm saying is breaking his neck trying to align himself with a potential uh, presidential candidate or or a potential president. Um, it's because he's he's about trying to build a kingdom for himself. Yeah. He's trying to be cool so he can yeah get that money. So say, yeah, yeah, after that money, he has that filthy lucre because mm -hmm. that's what that is, and it's it's, a, it's an astounding thing. Um, I'm trying to get people to understand this thing is this thing is based on God and His power, right. and people just keep missing it, and it just it's just tripping me out about it because. You know, <coughs> people just, <coughs> excuse me, have these strange ideas. Um, let me tell you about the power of prophetic and apostolic when it works like it should. Now, there have been many prophecies that have been made in this house. And I'm watching how God is doing the thing, see. See, God will say something, and you just give God time enough. And, and as my, my daddy used to say this way, so I'm going to put time on it. And I always was satisfied my daddy said that because my daddy figures like this, okay, I can't see it now, but as time progresses, if it's God, it's going to play its way out. And my mama, my mama would say, well, you know, well, time will tell. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I was really glad my daddy would say it, even more so than my, than my mama, because my dad was an observer. My dad would see stuff and not say anything. And my dad would pick his times when he would start to talk about certain things. See, my daddy might see something today, and it might be good or might be bad. Daddy was daddy might not say nothing for six, nine, twelve months. Then one day, you might have a conversation with him, and he'll come out with it. You know, so a lot of times, it's a lot of stuff my daddy saw he didn't appreciate, and he but you know he just wouldn't say anything until he picked his time he would talk about it. Um, but it was some things that were prophesied. Uh, in this house, in this room, 20 years ago. And that's about right. I would say about 20 years ago. Probably 18 to 20 years ago. Um, and it's interesting as I'm watching those prophecies come to pass, pay attention. Just because something has not manifested that you were told 5, 10 years ago, don't mean you're prophesied to. Sometimes it's going to take time for the prophecies to work out. And the enemy will do stuff to delay stuff. You understand that if Danny had to fast 21 days, you know, sometimes, believe it or not, your stuff is, is a fight going on in the heavens a lot of times. And the enemy will do stuff to keep throwing stuff off 
that there won't be communication. Things will have happened sometimes, but you don't, you, you have to wait for things to work out. <clears throat> and I got into a conversation with my daughter this week. And um, she said that she had seen, I happened to meet, said that, you know, I hadn't seen a bunch of our, our uh, former neighbors. Because my daughter told me somebody who went to school with my son, he used to give my son a hard time, is dead now. Um, my, my son actually had to whip his behind to take the truth. To get him to act right, really, that's he's really, dead. Yeah, but wow. the rest said he got shot. Said he got shot. So he's wow. dead now. Uh, so, and I was just remarking that I had not seen. I've only seen one of my former neighbors in the last three to five years, and that was the the girl that was your age. Mm -hmm. I've not seen the mom, mm -hmm. the brother, her brother, or the cousins. I haven't seen anybody. And my daughter said, oh, she said, well, I seen uh, Keisha, so seen Keisha the other day, saw John. Mm -hmm. But then she, they, she said she saw the mother, Rhonda. Mm -hmm. They said Rhonda, well, she, Ron, she actually had a conversation with Rhonda. She said Rhonda was working at UNCG. Mm -hmm. And listen to this. She said, that, <clears throat> she said, Laurel, she said, I was always uncomfortable around your parents because I knew they were saved. Mm -hmm. And said I could always feel something around them. And my wife uh, invited their mother to our meetings and see here's what the prophecy was that prophet <clears throat> michael dalton prophesied in this in this room many many years ago we would have tremendous meetings here i know we would have meetings here and it would just be a, a, a hush and a quiet in this block for hours after those 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 meetings we'd have here. and uh at any rate <clears throat> he said he said he said, your ministry is going to affect a lot of people. He said, but what it is, they're not going to come out with it right now. He said, the time is going to come when people are going to be saved and they're going to come and they're going to, they're going to testify how your ministry blessed them. He said, but right now, folk won't be talking about it right now. It's going to be, it's going to be later that it's going to come out. So, my daughter sees our former neighbor, and she said, "You know, I said, you know, she's a God has turned my life around. I'm, you know, I'm living differently now." And she said, "When your dad then would have meetings at y'all's house, she said I was sitting in my house and I felt the wind blowing." Hmm. But see, the Bible says what, and these signs shall follow them that believe. And that's the point I'm talking about having power. Mm -hmm. If you really have the stuff, there are going to be signs and miracles and wonders. Now, she had enough to put it together of that wind blowing in her house. Now, see, this was a manifestation I didn't even know that the Lord was doing. I often talked with the Lord about that kind of manifestation. Because I have had it happen to me. And I've known it to happen when other people were ministering. I think they said one time the wind got blown so strong at Kevin Coogan meeting that people were fighting to get back in their seats. Mm -hmm. But for her to feel that wind blowing in her house, guess what? She lived two houses down from us. Mm -hmm. So God did what? He still manifested himself. See, a lot of times, people are being touched and affected, but you don't always know it. And see, she confessed it, it came out. And see, I made sure, and it was interesting because Michael's, you know, going around the globe with different meetings, and he happened to say, he, <coughs> he used the term about the wind blowing. About the, you know, he was saying it was prayers of the saints that were helping. And I told him, I said, speaking of wind, then I told him, I said, remember you prophesied. That this would happen, that people would be affected by my ministry, and it would come out years later. And I told him that story. He just went, Wow. Mm -hmm. But see, that's the whole thing about it. So don't let some prophecies that may not have manifested yet hold on to them. Don't think the folk lied to you. Don't, you know, every, everybody didn't prophesy lie to you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it is true, but it may take time for it to come to pass. But that's part of what we're praying for is for uh, prophecies that have been uh, prophesied over you to be made manifest, for things to happen, because the enemy will fight in the heavens 
and try to mess up your, uh, the prophecies, try to get you to faint. Um, now, again, getting back to what I was saying to, to this pastor, I told him, I said, look, and, you know, and then I'm going to talk about this, and then we're going to get ready to pray. <clears throat> um, I said unto him, I said, listen, I said, when I said consecration, I told him I said so. I made sure I broke it down. I said a lack of consecration. Mm -hmm. You know, I was getting the cross with a lack of consecration. Then I gave him a working example. Because by that time he was on his way out and he came to the table where we were. We were going to go to the corral. And I said, listen, I guess the Lord sent us there. Again, your mama wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And there he was sitting there. Mm -hmm. And so um, I made sure I explained to him. I said, when I say that, I said a lack of consecration. I said, now, what you said a while ago was you didn't really hear a message that you had been teaching. But I, I wanted to get this across to him, and I know I did. I said, that really is not the point. I said, it's one thing to preach it and teach it, but do you have the manifestation? Here's the example I gave him, a real working example. Many years ago, Benny Hinn was teaching on walking into a room and being able to change the atmosphere. Now, I knew that that was a manifestation. I was already experiencing that. It wasn't, it wasn't a new teaching for me. But many in the body of Christ, it was new to them. I mean, I've been doing that. I won't even try and do it. I just walked in and the presence of God that was on me was in the room. Folks would start sweating, talking about, man, it's hot in here. And I, sometimes I would laugh about it because I knew what was going on. Haven't been the time, too, when uh, uh, there would be a meeting of uh, your mom's people. And they were talking about, boy, it's hot in here. And I said, yeah, you have no idea what it is. Um, but when you carry God's glory on you, you can walk in the room and all of a sudden, folk, they sweating, fanning. Turn the air conditioning up more. That's that's a natural phenomenon. But I've I've gotten so used to it that sometimes I don't think about it. Sometimes I had to stop thinking about it. Like you told me the other night, you said, "Daddy, ain't no telling what you're feeling." Mm -hmm. And you know, it's like I forget. Sometimes I forget about that. Um, but here's the point I was saying. I said, "Listen," <clears throat> I said, "This pastor was." She was teaching on it. I said, you know, it's a hot teaching because folk here teaching on, on the TV. Then they want to teach it. I said, and really, there's nothing really wrong with it. But the thing about it is, is do you have the manifestation? I told him, I said, I went to the church. I said, and the difference was I have the manifestation. I said, when I went to talk to the pastor, I said, she was upset. So she was actually angry. I said, why? Because she felt the presence of God very strongly. And see, if you meet somebody who's carrying on an unction on them and you get mad, something's wrong with you. Something's wrong with you. And when I said that to him about not having the manifestation, guess what? He left. He up and left. You know why? Because he ain't got the manifestation. Yeah, he, hit home. Yeah, he ain't got the manifestation. See? That's a, your, your granddad would say, a hit dog a holler. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what Beth Still and Watkins Jr. said. And, you know, so that's, and, and that's just the truth. <clears throat> People want to teach and preach what's hot. But do you have the manifestation? But if you know you don't have the manifestation, seek God to get it. That's the point. Because what I was trying to get him to understand is, God's not impressed by what you're just preaching and teaching. It's not just the message, it's the unction behind it. That's the difference. It's the unction behind it. And what happens is people are, they're not used to consecrating themselves. They're not spending time in prayer. They're not spending time in the word. They're not spending time, you know, turning the plate down. Spending time before the Lord. That's consecration. Spending time in prayer. That's consecration. 
and people don't, what they want to do is they know they're being called to preach, so they want to use their, their gift to, to preach. But that's not just it. That's just a beginning. Then when folk feel an unction that's stronger than their pastors, they think it's witchcraft. You say, oh, light anointing. I mean, light. I mean, when Brother Yohambi, he was always talking about how, he said, he said, you'd be surprised how many of these pastors, they don't spend any time in prayer. They don't spend any time before the Lord. Well, you, just, you can't just make it off your gift. You have to spend time with God. That was the reason why I didn't want to preach, because I knew it was going to interfere with my time. See, that's, see I'm, you know, I'm just telling people. I, I didn't want to do this. I'm like, well, I'm like Paul, what would it be if I preach not the gospel? So it's like, it trips me out. I, I meet these men and women, God has called them to preach, but they think that they can, I, and I'm not saying I'm perfect. That's, that's not the point. The point is, though, you've got to spend time in some kind of consecration. You can't figure just because you preaching and teaching what's hot and what's now, as Flint as, uh, Wilson said, the church of what's happening now. I mean, and that's really the mindset that a lot of them have. Yeah, they teach the, the trending topics. Yeah. yeah, and they think that, that that's it, but it's more than that. No, because it's like the... The Lord was talking to me the other day, like about keys, because you know, checking out all this African rhythm. There's a very specific rhythm that in the that when the Cubans, the, when the Africans were turning into Cuban slaves, mm -hmm. they began speaking Spanish, and in Spanish they used the word key to describe this rhythm, and this rhythm literally does like unlock all cool. the other rhythms, right? And Lord was reminding me, he was like, yeah, he was like, it's cool that, you know, you studying, you know, this, this African stuff. But he was like, I've given you the key of David. So you shouldn't be, you know, but just don't get all hype and obsessed with checking out this African key. Mm -hmm. Whenever I've given you like an even more powerful key. <laughs> Real key. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> oh, OK. And just saying that to say, um, just like about keys and about doors. It's like Jesus said that he is the door to the father mm -hmm. jesus ain't even the door to heaven jesus is the door he ain't even the way to heaven he's the door to a person he's the door to his dad and the thing is is that with us being little christ's that we are doors like we are doors to a greater relationship and greater dimension and depth and while i was at a dome church sunday like what you this is this is like a perfect example of not only having the message but then also having the manifestation one of the things he's been teaching on is he's he's been teaching about Satan, and he's been trying to hit people to like and the th this particular slant that God's given him with his background in business is so killing because he essentially talks about and I'd like to dialogue with him further on this because he talks about the uh, the business aspect of satan's work in the earth and he takes all the terminology like merchants really what he's saying is that the kingdom the kingdom of heaven is actually a series of business transactions he goes through all of those monumental scriptures and he makes you think of it in terms of a transaction right like like Commerce. like it, exactly like uh so like you talk about adam and eve and the serpent or, or adam and eve and satan that was a transaction and the transaction was the one that adam lost his crown it's like you talk about you, default. Yeah, it's, it's like you go through every scripture, you know what I'm saying? And, and the Bible uses very specific, it talks about merchants. It talks about all these kinds of like business terminologies. Uh, but at any rate, the biggest thing that I dug about the service was not only did he give you like a really just dope message to kind of tickle your ears and your intellect and then, you know, also stir up the word. Like you've read those scriptures, you'd be like, dang, I ain't never thought about it like that before. Then when this dude got ready to pray, it was like, oh, uh -huh. oh, okay, okay. We, oh, it's that kind of Sunday. Oh, okay. Man, that joker got to, um, because like, you know, it's like, you know, what we've, you, you know, you've taught people for years and then it's like, you know what I'm I've been telling people too. Sometimes it's like the unction can be so strong, it puts you to sleep. And the mm -hmm. reason why it puts you to sleep is because God uses dreams and visions and trances to convey information. So I'm sitting there in the service 
just nodding, right? Mm -hmm. And it was funny because I was out and I was just about to see something. And then, man, he got on the mic and started making these prophetic declarations. And you know them Africans, man. Yeah, when they start, you know, they, they were like, I command everything that is held up in your life to be tried by fire. You know what I'm saying? He started doing that. And, man, it got lit. Mm -hmm. I mean, it got lit. And, and all I was just sitting there thinking was, I was just like, man, like, I just really appreciate this because not only did he give you a message with all the flowery words and all of the hip little isms and da da, da when he turned around and then he did the thing that whenever it was like, whenever I first began, you know, mm -hmm. uh, thinking about ministry myself, mm -hmm. I was just like, okay, wait a second. There's a formula here. Any man of God worth his salt, uh, it's not only he, he's going to tell you something, and then after he gets through telling, he's going to turn around. Now he's going to demonstrate. It's like everything we just talked about, all right, now it's about to happen. And then, and the thing is, is that when you get used to checking out ministers like that, you can tell a shift. When they get ready to go into that mode, mm -hmm. it's almost like, it's almost like, you know, like you're driving in town. That's the message. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You're driving in town. Oh, man, look at this. Oh, man, look at this. We can only do 35. Then... We see a sign that says the interstate. All right, now <coughs> we about to turn and we're going to get on this exit. Mm -hmm. And and whenever they get ready to open up and they get ready to minister now, it's almost like coming down that exit and you're getting ready to merge into traffic. It's, it's, like, five, seven. Yeah, it's like this acceleration takes place. The next thing you know, it's just you wide open. I'm not surprised, but, you know, I was telling your mama, I thank God for live stream because watching live stream, mm -hmm. He went to the meetings in Maryland. Mm -hmm. He went to the meetings in Virginia. And he went to the crusade for cancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, he so there, yeah. <coughs> he's seeking the Lord's face. Mm -hmm. And he's there with, <coughs> with the apostle. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and I I consider him one of his most diligent sons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. You know? He did everything. Yeah, so. Yeah, front and center. <coughs> so, I'm not surprised. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Because I'm looking how God has blessed me and increased me. And I've only been in one meeting in Durham. Mm -hmm. And I've just been following my live stream. But thank God, I understand the concepts mm -hmm. that I've been feeding for years when I'm not even there physically. So I ain't surprised at all mm -hmm. that when you said that you would go to this church, mm -hmm. I said, yeah. Because your mama said, wow. So he went, I said, yeah, I said, he, I said, he wanted to go where he knew the power of God was present. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> I woke up, I woke up, I had a couple of hours to kill. I was like, okay, I can go sit in a coffee shop and just screw around on my computer for a few hours. Mm -hmm. Or I can go get, I can go get zapped. <laughs> it's just like, yo. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's no, yes, yeah, it's, it's no, no brainer. Yeah, so I said, yeah, I said, he went, <clears throat> I said, he wouldn't do what the power was. I said, so, I said, it makes sense, you know, because we know. That God is really using him, and I, you know, I said, I said, Lord, I said, He's seeking, He's seeking your face, mm -hmm. you know. I said, so, I said, He was to the right place because uh, God used that young man very powerfully, and so I know that there's a dimension that is in His life, and see, I, I know the God would output because I'm just watching just, and see, the Lord was trying to get me to pray years ago at three o'clock in the morning, and I'll do it for a while, but I sure wouldn't do it for hours. I might pray for 15, 20 minutes and lay back down because I was sleepy, you know. Um, but the thing about it is, is really it's, it's funny because I find myself doing what I did as a young man, you know, because it used to be when I would get off work at 11, it didn't even get still in the house after 1 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I would be up with the Lord to about 5 or 6 in the morning. Then I would lay there and I might sleep at 9 or 9.30. I remember I did that for a good 30 days or so. Your mom looked at me, and I was working five days a week, 40 hours a week. Your mom looked at me, and she said, yeah, you, she said, yeah, you're a man of God. You've been called to that. She said, called, what you doing? In the natural, you couldn't do that because you working a job, and you getting, you doing good to get three hours sleep, and you doing this. She said, yeah, so the Lord's with you. You know, so, I, you know, as I was telling you, I'm, fine, I'm doing what I did as a young man. Um pattern. Yeah, they're folk doing too much. Mm -hmm. um, but see, the thing about it is, is, like you said, there's an acceleration, and uh, we, we're looking for that. In fact, that's one of the things, too. Um, there's, there's a shift. There's a dream that I, I'll tell you when we get off the air, but it's, 
but it had to do dealing about the principles and the powers. But there's a release that happens, like he's saying when you pray. See, a lot of times, see, here's what people don't recognize. If you don't get in the secret place, as uh, uh, Dr. Mike Murdoch says, into your prayer closet, if you don't spend time in prayer, when there's time to pray openly, mm -hmm. you don't get so much manifestation. See, a whole lot of time when you spend that time in the secret place in prayer, now when you do pray in public, that's when the manifestation comes forth. So a lot of people miss this. Then they wonder how come stuff ain't happening. Well, the biggest thing is, as I'm taking care of God's business, God's taking care of mine. So it's essential that you spend time with the Lord. Spend time with the Lord. And as you spend time with him, then you come out and, and you go and you work openly. That's when the display, that's when the power comes. In fact, again, listen to my wife. I was in the right place today at the right time. So, uh, and for more than one reason. So now we're getting ready to pray. Again, it's not just the message. It's the unction behind the message. Guess what I'm going to tell them about this? I'm reminding people. When I went to see uh, World Apostle Marcerillo years ago in Raleigh, there was this woman who was dressed up like a typical holiness preacher or saint. Collar up to here, dressed down to here, sleeve down to here, dressed down to the floor with a little doily on her head. But when Marcy had come to the altar, when she felt all that power coming off that little Jew preacher, she stopped. And I mean, she stopped maybe 30 or more feet away from him. She felt that power and she would not come closer. Now, if she was as holy on the inside as her outside looked, why didn't she get as close to the altar as she could have? She, she could have come within 10 feet of him. We had to walk around her. She felt that power and stopped. But see, it's real power, more than just enough to make you shout and dance. See, a person who ain't saved can shout and dance. So I ain't always impressed by folk that shout and dance. You could have been in the club at 3 or 4 in the morning. And you could you could still shout and dance that morning at 11 o'clock service. So it ain't just shouting and dancing. It's dancing and shouting in the spirit when the spirit of the Lord is really on you and really moving in you. So see, she looked at the holy part, but when she felt that real power, she didn't want really want no parts of it. Why would you stop? Maybe something ain't right. Yeah, something in you is not right. She's trying to hold on to. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like, yo, you be up there. Yeah, she walked up and felt that boy. She stopped and looked. Hmm. And, I'm, and we, had to, we had to walk around her. Because we were right behind her. We had to walk around and get to the altar. Yeah, and that's totally scriptural. Um, whenever God manifested himself on Mount Sinai, uh, he was trying to establish, like, a face to face relationship with the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. And whenever they saw all of that power, <laughs> they were like, Hey, Moses, come here, bro. Yeah. You go talk to him. Mm -hmm. We don't want to talk to him. Yeah. So it's what we're saying. We just ain't making this up because some of y'all ain't read your Bible enough. And, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's they, true. Think, they think that's we true. just talking. That, that, that's really true. That's true. Um, you you know, it, it's, it's, it's really real. Um, and it, it, it's funny because you know, um, I t I tell people I you know, I confess this when I uh, one of the meetings we had we were we weren't on the air just the other week and I was telling two young women I said you know really I said drinking I yeah it wasn't a big thing to me I didn't start really drinking when I was almost twenty two I said but I like to smoke pot and so I like that high you know that I got from that well guess what that substitution became when the Holy Spirit got on me and I got that high. And so I enjoy being in God's presence. I mean, it's, it's, it's just a great feeling to feel his presence. And it's an awesome thing 
But, it, you know, I, I like that. And, I mean, I've been in meetings where, man, it was hard to, to stand up. I tell people, when I when I see this watching Mar Cirillo, man, it was like walking through a little energy field. I'm, I'm walking toward him, and it's, it's like, you're talking about, <laughs> mm-hmm. you, man, you, I'm telling you, it was something to, to get to him. You know, so that's what you want. You want God's power to be so, the glory of God. You want the glory of God. You want the, all that he has and all that God is. So that's what the glory is. Glory is greater than anointing. You want that manifestation to be so strong that when the yeah, when folks shout and dance and it's showing us something's really going on. It's not just it's past the point of blessing. It's past that. There's such a manifestation that all kind of stuff, real bedlam hits. And a lot of times, no, you don't have to lay hands on the sick. And you can make prophetic declarations because the air is so thick with God's presence. That's what you want. So that's what we're believing that God is going to do. And I'm believing that the presence of God is just going to be so strong where you are. Now, if you're you're, um, watching this on your phone, or listen to it on your phone and you might be driving, it might be a good idea for you to pull over. I'm I'm very serious about that. Because if you are streaming this over your phone and you're driving, and I'm getting ready to start praying, you really need to go ahead and pull over somewhere. Because I don't want you to get too drunk and and certain things begin to manifest. Now I'm, I'm very serious about that. Because the Spirit of God he takes over, and when he does, it's power. And uh, we're just believing God to do some great things. And I'm, I'm getting ready to start making some uh, prophetic and really apostolic declarations uh, in the next in the next few minutes, because uh, I know good and well uh, by being obedient, get back on the air. The Lord was saying it was definitely some things that he. Again, he wanted me to say, he wanted me to say them on the air and really into the atmosphere because that's we're, we're broadcasting. We're, we're dealing with principalities and powers. Remember, uh, we, what, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of darkness, against wicked spirits in high places. So that's this is real. This is real. It's real warfare. So And so now we're getting ready to... Uh, Make our petition. Father, again, Lord, we thank you that we are back on the air. And Lord, even now, as I'm saying that, I can feel your presence going throughout the atmosphere. Father, we bind every principality, every power, rule of darkness, every wicked spirit, every high place. Lord, we bind those, Lord, that go to the groves and to the high places. We bind those that drink blood. We bind those, Eshera, the Sandra, or the Sira, the Sunday. Era the Sindra or the Sira da Sandra or Meninja Basolo. Robert de Seba Sabarador and Sabara do Manarado. Robert de Abasunda or Shira da Basande. Lord, we bind those, Lord, who are called and anointed, Lord, but they still take an oath to false gods. Asha, Rodo Sibero do Sabarado. Robert de Abasunda or Shira da Basunda or Shira da Basande. Lord, we bind those who are preparing, Lord, next month, Lord, for the 31st of October, Lord. We bind Eshirada Sandra Osmerida, Eshirada Sonda Oshiradera da Sandra Omenindrida, Robadeda Basenda Oshirada Sandra Omenindra Basondo. Lord, we bind those, Lord, who try to talk out of both sides of their mouths. They want to say, Lord, Lord, but Lord, they have a spirit of witchcraft, a spirit of divination. Eshira the Syrian out of Basondo, though we bind those Lord who have touched the unclean thing of Freemasonry. Eshira the Sundra O Shira de Basondo, Rolo O Shira da Basondo O Shira da Ba, Robert de Basondo O Shira da Basande. Though we bind those as the Basorado Sabara do Sodo, who have built kingdoms for themselves, Lord, and even those Lord who think they have tricked me, that they have fooled me and they have not. Lord, I know that you have a plan, Lord, and you are doing your plan, Lord. Unks be notes to them. They have no idea, Lord, that they have not fooled me. Eshara the Syria the Sindra or Adabasande. 
Roda O Sherida Basundo O Sherida Sirida. Roba de la Basundo O Sherida Rada Basundo. Roda O Sherida Basanda Erada Basundi. Rianda de Sundo O Sherida Sirida. Rebi Andra Oradel da Basundo O Sherida Basandi. Roba de la Basunda O Sherida Basundo Osma. Roba de la Indra Asunda O Sherida la Basundo. Roba de la Basunda Ero da Sura da Sandra Do. Rianda de Rada Sanda O Sherida Sindi. Rianda de Rada Sandra Oradel da Basandi. Though we bind those with our son to Osher and our daughter of a Sunday. We under Isha Rada Basson to Osher and Sunday. Repidero the center Osher and out of a Sunday. Lord Ishandra or the Syrian out of a Sunday. We under us to borrow Dora Vasando. Though we bind every black fast Isha Rada. Roda Osher and Asanda Osher and Ara. Robin and Abasson to Lord, let it come to know. I sure had a Sira da Sandro do, he sure had a Sora de Sira da, Reba de Sondo, oh sure had a Basande. Lord, I bind that young lady that I saw, Lord, with that instrument, Lord, to try to bring the right frequency. He sure had a Sira da Basande. Lord, let it come to know. I sure had a Sando, oh sure had a Basande. Lord, as she tries to summon the demon, Lord, let it turn around. It's sure that I'm a Sunday. Flip it on her. Us of a Torah, the Syrida. It's sure that I send the Oshira, the Sindhi. We are the Oshira, the Sanda Oshira. And Lord, I pray that you open the eyes of your saints. There are around these pastors, Lord, who are dibbling and dabbling, Lord, in unclean things. Those who are dibbling and dabbling in witchcraft. Lord, let them be discerning. Let them have dreams and visions, Lord. I know they're going to start them at first, Lord. They're not going to believe it. <clears throat> but I pray that you continue to show them. Lord, show them beyond a shadow of a doubt that these men and women are dabbling in the unclean thing, Lord, in the witchcraft. That that deadly mixture, that Baal worship. And look, but you said, Lord, many would say, Lord, Lord, but they didn't know you. And they think because they call an anointed, Lord, that they can get away with that. But that's that's Baal worship. Lord, I pray that you make this thing perfectly clear. And Lord, let them know that if they do not repent, Lord, that you are sending your judgment and you are a righteous judge. Not man, but Lord, you are the righteous judge. Ashma ran out of a son to Osher and this year and out of a son to my Sunday. Osher ran out of a Sunday. Lord, I know, Lord, that we all need you, Lord, and we all have flaws. But all of us, Lord, are not going to the, to the altar of Satan, taking oaths, doing rituals, doing handshakes, having nothing but the spirit of witchcraft on them. And they don't even recognize that you can discern its own them. Oh, sure, the red ass board, the yellow down, brother, over the sure, that Sunday. Ishmara, do sira, that or that smara, there at the boat. Roda, oh, sure, that or eminent, or be out of the Sunday. Lord, I bind issue, that sundo. I bind the people in the circle, and I bind that woman on the other side. I bind all three groups. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I bind every plot and every scheme. Oshira da Sira da Sunday, Oshira da Basande. Roda Oshira da Sunday. Lord, I bind those Ishira da Basande. I bind Ishira da Sira da Sindra da. Roda Oshira da Sandra or the Sira da Botondo. Ishira da. Lord, I bind these drug deals, Lord, that are working witchcraft, Lord, not to get caught. I bind that witchcraft in Jesus' name. Lord, let that Ishira da Sira da Sunday Oshma. Robert Adam Sunday Oshira da Basande. Lord, kill that witchcraft out, Lord. Let them get caught. They need to be caught. They're ruining people's lives or selling crack. It's sure they selling meth. It's sure out of a Sunday or sure they send it. And that Molly, or sure out of a Sunday. Lord, they're ruining people's lives, Lord. And Father, we bind that spirit, Lord, that my son saw a few weeks ago, Lord, that, that spirit, Lord, that's causing women to get hooked on drugs and going to prostitution. I sure the Sandra or the Sarah, the Sandra, Lord. I sure the Sandra or sure the Sandra, Lord. Roda O Shera da Sando O Shira de Sinde. Ishira de Sira da Sando O Shira da. Roba de la Sando O Shira de la Sande. Lord, I bind the unclean spirit, Lord. You showed me over 20 years ago, Lord, where women who are lesbians are working witchcraft to draw straight women into lesbianism. These women are wondering, why am I laying with the woman? 
I sure it out of a Sunday. I bind that spirit of witchcraft. I sure it out of a Sunday. Oh, sure it is in day. It sure it is all right a Sunday. Oh, sure it out. And I bind that unclean spirit. I shall turtle sear it a Sunday. Roll oh, sure it out of a Sunday. Oh, sure it out of a Sunday. Eh, Rodasa wrote the whole spirit out of a Sunday. Red elder Rasando O Sherid Asandra Lee. We had a Basondo O Sherid Asandra Lee. Esmer the Sirid Asandra Osma. Robert Ella Basando O Sherid Asande. Rianda O Sherid Asandra Osma. Roda O Sherid Asandra O Sherid Ada Basande. Red O Sherid Abasoda O Sherid. Esmer the Sondo O Sherid. Rada Basando O Sherid Ada Basande. Esmer the Sora the Sirid Ada Bada. Roman in there or the Sando O Sherida, Roda O Sherida, Sando O Sheridi, Ishmarada Basondo O Sherida, Roman in there or the Sondo O Sheridia, Robert Ada Basando O Sheridi Sinde, Ishmara the Sondo O Sherida. Lord, we bind these spirits, Lord, Ishmara Ada Basande. Lord, we send your spirit, Lord, to every school from uh, Ishmara Ada Basande, from daycare, Lord the pre-kindergarten, Lord, to all through elementary school, Lord, to middle school, the high school, Lord, the college, Lord, even as you're at Adam at the graduate level, Lord. Lord, we bind the local covens, Lord, that are on these different campuses on this uh, in this city of Greensboro, Lord. As you're at Asante, oh, share at Adam Asante. We bind, as you're at Adam, every coven, and we bind every coven, Lord, that they're linked to outside it's sure that I'm a Sunday of the campuses, Lord. We bow in Jesus' name, Lord. I pray for there be a double anointing to hit from all those years, Lord, that you had me bind the rituals that were going on, Lord. It's sure that Sarah that Sandra Obanaro do. It's sure that Sandra Ora that I'm a Sunday. Lord, let each year that I'm a Sunday as they do these bonfires and they do the rituals, Lord. I pray, it's sure that I'm a Sunday that the real fire of God will be made manifest. Lord, let it be as though I have issued out of a Sunday, walked into the area, Lord, and anointed those areas. Let your spirit be so strong, Lord, that you will infuse, issue it out of a Sunday, the fuel source, that you will infuse the materials that are burned, Lord. I share the spirit out of a Sunday. I share the spirit out of a Sunday. Lord, I share it out of a Sunday. And Lord, even as they get ready to do their rituals and chants, Lord, I pray that the power of God will be so strong that the very demons, Lord, that are within them and around them, Lord, will be cast away, cast aside, and that the very atmosphere will be charged with the glory of God, not the anointing, but the glory of God. Lord, many years ago, Lord, you could feel that unction miles away from the campus. Lord, I pray that you blanket it, Lord, for a five-mile radius, for a five-mile radius, not just in the heavenlies, Lord, but in the very issue of Adam Asundo. The very streets, the very houses, the very apartments, Lord, the very dormitories, the very campus. And Lord, let it touch every one of the churches within that five mile radius. Lord, let there be real change. Let real change, real manifestation take place. Ishura the Sira the Sira da Sunday or Shira da Basande. Ishmira da Basande. Lord, let them come out of ritual form and ceremony, Lord. Let them come out of intellectualism. Let them come out of atheism. Ishmira da Basando or Rana Rabasando. Ishura the Sindra Ero da Basande. Lord, let them Ishura da Sunday or Shira da Basande. Lord, as they come down to the altar, Lord, let it be real. Let people make a confession of faith. Lord, there are so many churches within a mile. We ain't talking about a five mile radius, just a mile. There's a bunch of churches within a mile. Lord, turn this thing around. Lord, we're about to go into Rosh Hashanah. Lord, there's a portal. Eshira de Sande. Oshira de Arada Andre Arada Basando Oshira de. Eshmira de Sirada Arada Manara de Sondo. Odo Oshira de Arada Basande. Ready, Arrow, Sando, O Sherry, Descend, Arrow, Dalla, Dalla, 
Lolo Oshira there and Abbas Sunda Oshira. Ishmirada Andra or the Sirada Sando. Lolo Oshira under Omen in the Bisondo. Lord, let everything work out according to your will by the power of the Holy Ghost, Lord. We'll be careful to give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. For all the glory is thine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm-hmm.